Here's the answer to the million dollar question. Should the average person get the Apple Watch SE? Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and I'm an activator at the Knowledge Society and the founder of Kevin Love Ventures. And welcome to Tech Tuesday, where I review some of my favorite tech gadgets and products so that you can make the call if it's worth it for you. I'm going to be doing a quick review of the Apple Watch SE, a watch that I've personally been wearing every single day for the last six months. To save you time, we'll start with the overall conclusion and whether or not it's worth it. So if that's all you're here for, that's not a problem, but then I'll actually go into more detail about the five main use cases that I personally use the watch for, and then right at the end, we'll do a really quick discussion about whether all those use cases are really worth the $400 price tag here in Canada. So the conclusion is, I absolutely love my Apple Watch and I use it every single day since it adds a small amount of convenience to my life in the form of notifications, Apple Pay, best-in-class fitness tracking, music, podcasts, and audiobook playback, maps, and other loads of small trinkets that makes it a joy to use. I also think it just looks really nice as a small accessory where it goes with whatever I'm wearing and also in a slight egotistical way, it allows me to signal to people that I'm a chill dude who's into tech but still cares about their health and personal well-being and all that sort of stuff. Is all this worth the $400 price tag? Well, that's a little bit more complicated in my opinion. And while I personally think that it's worth it and I don't work out the money spent on this, I'm glad I spent the money, but whether or not it's worth it will depend on your personal circumstances a lot. And also I'll discuss more of that at the end of the video in this timestamp right here. If you wanna skip forward, go ahead. So that was the overall conclusion. And if that was all that you're here for, well, that's fantastic. Feel free to drop a like on this video with a quick subscribe and then go feel free to do something better with your life. But for the rest of the video, I'm gonna talk about the specs, my personal use cases, that has revived some form of value to my life and beyond. The Apple Watch SE is the budget model that Apple released of its watch in September 2020, but that actually doesn't really feel like a budget model. It essentially has the same slick design as the Apple Watch Series 6 with a high resolution display that's edge to edge, and while also packing in the fast S5 chip that's found on the Series 5 from a few years ago. Basically, it's slick, fast, and packed with a lot of features while also being affordable, at least in Apple Land, coming in at $369 Canadian for the base 40mm model and $409 for the larger 44mm non-cellular version model. If you want to upgrade to the cellular version, you could, but I personally don't think it's worth it because the only difference is that the cellular version allows you to make calls without your phone present, but you would need to spend more. The only thing that's missing is the always on display, blood oxygen app, and ECG functionality that's found on the pricier Series 6 model. But if that's a deal breaker, feel free to look into it, but I personally think it's not the end of the world. Now let's talk about these use cases, because while they aren't life-changing in any way, they actually make life a tad bit more enjoyable. Whether that's worth the price tag, I personally do, but that's your call. So the first thing is actually the notifications. I only like having some notifications appear on my watch, since I do like to have my focused deep work sessions. The only notifications that I do let through though are usually the important ones like text messages, calendar reminders, and other notifications that I find essential. Sometimes it's just nice to get that endorphin boost of someone wanting to talk to me, but that's just me. The second thing is actually Apple Pay. Now this is super useful because it means worst comes to worst, if I forget my wallet at home, I can actually just really quickly double tap to pay with the watch and the built-in NFC. Plus I think it's super badass and allows me to feel like a main character in a movie. Since most places in Toronto accept it now, I actually think it's kind of cool too. But the only annoying thing is that when it actually doesn't end up working, which ends up being a super embarrassing encounter, but oh well, it is what it is. Moving on to the third thing is the ability to control and now play back music or other forms of audio directly from the watch. This is super cool because if I'm out and about, I can easily connect my earbuds to the watch, open up Spotify, Script, or Apple Podcasts, and just jam out to some of my favorite bops. I can actually control playback with my watch for any other devices that happens to be linked to my phone, which is actually great because when I'm in a flow state and I don't want to disrupt it by moving, I can just quickly change different things directly from my watch. The fourth thing that I actually really like is how the Apple Watch seriously encouraged me to step up my fitness game, become healthier, and less of a waste man. I think this case alone justifies the $400 price tag since I'm not going on more walks, more runs, more bike rides, and just finding ways to close my rings, resulting in a better state of mental health, especially during this time where the pandemic has already been going on for 16 months already. And now this last little trinket is actually where I can use the Maps app on my watch. Oftentimes when I'm going to downtown Toronto, I tend to have a really bad sense of direction. And since I don't want to look like a tourist in my own city, what I like to do is actually set up directions and send it to my watch so it can ping me turn by turn. 
I'm pretty sure there's also the functionality of actually having the directions being read in my ear with my earbuds as I just walk along, along the process. This is a very helpful safety feature, especially when you're going out alone and about during the nights as well. So this begs the question, is this worth it? Well, in any case, how do you actually decide if this is actually worth it for you? So I've come up with a really quick three-part framework that I actually like to use when I'm making all of my purchase decisions. Number one, does this purchase make me any happier or healthier? Number two, does it solve any problems or remove any negatives from my life? And three, does it allow me to do or make anything that creates value or further impact in my life and the world? And for the Apple Watch, I personally think that the answer is yes to all three of these questions, but in varying degrees. The answer might not be the same for you. Yes, all these things can be done on your phone, which you probably already have directly in your pocket or you're holding right now. But for me, the fitness encouragement and tracking has made such a big difference on getting me through the mental health struggles that I've been through during the pandemic. And I think that itself is worth the $400 price tag alone. I think it also ends up adding tiny pieces of convenience that otherwise would be lost and makes me more likely to consume valuable content in the form of audiobooks, podcasts, or other things that might allow me to gain new insights that I can then translate into new ideas, new content, and new startups. But is it worth it for you? Well, once again, that's a personal question that you need to answer for yourself. I personally don't recommend buying it and I think it's totally been worth it for me because of the value that it's provided has actually paid for itself many times over. However, you might not need the watch since you can do this with the same things on your phone or any other devices that you already have. So feel free to take just a little bit of time to think this through, sleep on it, and if you still think that you need this after your beauty sleep, then chances are it could be a good fit. I personally worked three lifeguard shifts last year to pay for this, which might have sounded like a bad financial decision at the time, but given that I'm treating this as an investment into my health and future and saving time, I think it's all good and it's been totally worth it. And the last thing I'd say is that if I was faced with the choice of putting that $400 to invest in my own education in the form of more courses, books, or other resources versus the watch, I'd actually definitely put it towards the first bucket of bettering myself with my education. Speaking of education and self-improvement, this video is actually sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is a beautiful learning platform with thousands of classes ranging from animation, cinematography, entrepreneurship, all the way back to life skills like cooking who are taught by amazing instructors who are great at what they do. The great thing about Skillshare is that it's the very opposite of all your typical lectures that you find at school or elsewhere where someone's reading from PowerPoint and boring you to death. Classes on Skillshare are highly interactive with opportunities to build or make something through a hands-on learning project, and it's all included in one low monthly fee. So what are you waiting for? To get you started, I've actually partnered with Skillshare and the first 100 people to use the link in the description can get one month free of Skillshare today. You can cancel at any time with no risk to you. Thank you once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And with that said, that wraps it up for today's episode of Tech Tuesday. And I hope you have a blessed rest of your day. Cheers.